I'm Kehlani, and I'm your host for Code Along. If you've ever dreamed of creating your own animated story, but didn't know where to start, you're in the right place. Let's go. Today, we're going to create a storyline for our sprites to follow. But first, we need to know how to create a story. A story should contain a few basic elements. Characters, a problem, a solution, and a lesson learned or message. What should our story be about? I think I have an idea. Your story can be totally different, but for now, code along with me. I want my main character to be a girl named Mia. Mia's lost her laptop, which has all of her unfinished coding assignments on it. Oh no. Mia is so upset, so she asks her friend Sarah to help her find it. The good news is, Sarah finds the laptop. But the bad news is, Mia and Sarah get separated. Now it's up to Mia to find Sarah so she can recover her laptop in time to complete her assignment. Go to scratch.mit.edu. Remember to log in. Now we're ready to create a new project. Open Scratch and click File, then New. Then, we need to delete the cat sprite. Sorry, cat. Click on the X in the circle above the cat to remove it. Let's start by adding the different characters to our story. You can click on the sprite icon in the bottom right-hand corner of the screen. Click on the People tab and choose your characters. I'm going to choose Avery and Danny as the two friends. Then rename them to Mia and Sarah. Next, I need to choose the supporting cast of friends, which don't have to be people. So let's choose a reindeer, a crab, a mermaid, and Luca. I'm going to call the reindeer Grace, the crab Christy, the mermaid Naomi, and change Luca to Dawn. Excellent. Now we have our full cast of characters for our story. I want all of the characters except Mia and Dawn to be hidden. To do this, I can click on each character, then select the hidden button in the sprite panel. The next thing to do is to pick our backdrops. Click on the backdrop icon in the bottom right corner. Let's start off by having the characters talking outdoors, then move them to another backdrop every time they talk to someone new. I'm going to choose the bench with a view, beach Malibu, mountain, and underwater too. Let's start off the story by having Mia and Dawn talking by the bench. Click on Mia, Go to the Events tab, then drag the When the Sprite Click block to the Scripts area. Next, go to the Looks tab and add the Say Hello for 2 seconds block below the first block. They'll snap together like puzzle pieces. Then read the blocks from top to bottom. When the Sprite clicked, say hello for 2 seconds. Now, click on Mia. Well, I don't want to say hello. I want to start our conversation. Click hello in the white circle and change it to, I'm supposed to go on a trip with Sarah, but she left already. Now I'm going to add two more say blocks and a think, hmm, for two seconds block below our first set of blocks. Then, we can add to our initial conversation. I want it to read as follows. When this sprite clicked, say I'm supposed to go on a trip with Sarah, but she left already. She told me she left clues with our friends about her location. Hmm, do you know where she is? Great, so now that we know everything Mia has to say, we need a way for Dawn to respond. Let's use the broadcast blocks from the events tab. I want to add the broadcast message and wait block below our last say block. 
The broadcast and wait block will make Sprite A wait until both Sprite B and Sprite C have completed the scripts before continuing with its own script. Now, click the message in the broadcast block and add a new message. Change the message to Talk to Don. It's Don's turn to continue the conversation. I'm going to click on Don, then drag and drop the When I Receive message block to the scripts area. You can click the drop menu and select the Talk to Don message. This will connect the conversation between the two characters. I'm going to add a couple of save blocks below the first block. I want them to say, hey Mia, you missed her. She was talking and moving very fast. She said something about it being very cold where she's going and needed to borrow my snow boots. Sound like she might be visiting Grace. After Dawn responds, we want to hide her character. So I'll go back to the looks tab and add the hide block to the end of the conversation. Awesome! So after Dawn responds to Mia, we need to transition the next part of our story. I want Mia to say, thank you, Dawn, before walking over to the edge of the stage. Then I want the next backdrop to automatically show. After the next backdrop shows, I'm going to reset Mia's position back to its original place and start with our next conversation with Grace. To do this, I'll go to the Motion tab and select the Glide 1 Seconds to X and Y block. First, let's drag Mia to the place we want her to glide to so we can see the coordinates in the sprite pane below the stage. Add the X and Y coordinates, then move her back to her original position. Add a Switch Backdrop to Next Backdrop block. Below that, add a go to X and Y block. You'll see a white bubble with the number next to the X and Y. Add the X and Y coordinates from her current position. The last thing I'm going to do is add another broadcast and wait block to the end of our block set. Then change the new message to talk to Grace. Wow, that was a lot. Let's test it out. You can follow similar steps to add dialogue to the rest of the characters in the story. Since we hid the rest of the characters in the beginning, we need a way to show them once it's their turn to talk. I'm going to click on Grace, then drag and drop the When I Receive Talk to Grace block to the scripts area. I want to wait two seconds before I show Grace. Then say, hey Mia, long time no see. You look warm. And broadcast respond to Mia. Now you know all the steps to create a conversation between all the characters in the story keep the story moving along. But wait, there's more. I want to show you how we can get our characters to ask and respond to questions. Watch this. I'm going to click on Mia, then go to the sensing tab and add the ask blank and wait block. The block displays a question or prompt that you define to the user. The block then waits for the user to type in an answer 
and press the enter key or click on the check mark. Let's ask Sarah. Hey Sarah, I've been searching all over for you. Have you found my laptop? Then go to the control tab and add an if else block below my when I receive blank block. The if block is where you place a condition. If this condition is true, then the code inside this section will run. If the condition in the if block is false, the code inside this else section will execute instead. So if Sarah answers yes, then Sarah will say awesome. What a relief. Now I can finally finish my coding assignment. I've been working so hard to build my own game. Then broadcast a final response to hide Sarah and Naomi. After that, I want Mia to go back to her room with her newly found laptop. Add the variable answer from the sensing tab and the equals block from the operator tab. Then put the answer set inside the equals block and set it equal to yes. Next, I'll drag it inside of the if statement like so. The last part is to add Mia's response if Sarah says no. So what should Mia say? I think she would say, oh no, oh no, what am I gonna do now? I'm totally gonna fill my coding assignment. Next time I should really take better care of my things. I'm going to broadcast a final response to Sarah and Naomi, then switch the backdrop to her house. Let's review. To create a story script in Scratch, start by using the event blocks to determine when your story begins or when the characters get activated. Use the motion blocks to animate your sprites and make them move. Use the control blocks to help you sequence events, add pauses, or introduce repetition. You can also set conditional statements in your story, such as if the character says yes, then do this. Use the looks blocks to change the appearance of sprites. Allow them to speak through dialogue bubbles, change costumes, or alter the backdrop to enrich the visual narrative of your story. Lastly, remember you can use sensing blocks to have your characters ask and respond to questions. Let's see how I combine all those elements together to make my final story. If you want a closer look at my code, be sure to click the project link below. Whew. The last step is to save our work. Let's give our project the title, then click Save Now in the top right hand corner, or go to File and select Save Now. If you want to share your wonderful story with other coders or friends, then click the Share button. I can't wait to see how your stories turn out. Until next time, coders!